What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to find trig ratios from a point. So we have theta is an angle in standard position, and the terminal side passes through this point, 3, 1. And what we actually want to do here is find the exact value of cosecant theta. So what we're going to do here is we'll sketch this out. The point, 3, 1 goes to the right three units, and it goes up one unit. So it's going to be somewhere over here. And what we want to do is connect the origin to the point 3, 1, but we also want to draw in the horizontal lines going this way to the right three units and going up one unit like this. So theta is actually referring to this angle over here because if it's starting in standard position, standard position is the positive side of the x-axis and it's spinning counterclockwise like this to the point 3, 1. So we label these sides. We're going to the right three units and up one unit. And if we want to find cosecant theta, we have to know the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So if we call it c, we could say c squared equals 3 squared plus 1 squared. And that tells you then that c squared is equal to 9 plus 1, which is 10. And if we take the square root of both sides, that tells us c equals square root 10. So we know the length of the hypotenuse. So now all we have to do is use this right triangle to find cosecant theta. So what we could do first is find sine theta because we know that cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. It's the reciprocal of sine. So if theta is over here, sine is the ratio of the side opposite of theta, which in this case is 1, over the hypotenuse, which is square root 10. And just know the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So then here, if we want to find cosecant theta, we could just say cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta is 1 over square root 10. And when we work this out, this is just going to simplify to square root 10. At this step, all you have to do is just flip this to go from here to here because they are reciprocals sine and cosecant, but this is going to be our solution to the first question. So for the second question, things are immediately more difficult because now we're not in quadrant one anymore. We're going to quadrant four in this question. So we want to find tangent theta. And remember, theta is starting in standard position, and it's going to terminate at the point eight, negative 15, which is in quadrant four. So if we sketch this out, so let's just give ourselves some space. We're looking at the point eight, negative 15, which we'll say is down here. So that's this point over here. And let's say we're drawing the angle theta from standard position. So it's spinning all the way like this. Not the best drawing in the world, but it's just there to kind of illustrate the point. So theta is this big angle here going all the way to quadrant four. But what we want to do to find tangent theta is we want to use the reference angle. And remember, a reference angle is the angle formed, the positive acute angle formed by the x-axis and the terminal side of the angle. So we, all we do is just highlight the x-axis and the terminal side or where the angle ends. And you see it makes this acute angle over here. And now we could go ahead and build a right triangle with this. And this right triangle is going to help us find the value of tangent theta. So to get to this point, we have to go to the right eight units and we go down 15 units. And we don't actually need the length of the hypotenuse for this question because we're talking about tangent. But if we had to find it, this is an 8, 15, 17 right triangle. Or we could use Pythagorean theorem to find that missing side. So now to find the exact value of tangent theta, and let's be very mindful here that this angle is in quadrant four, we have to use the idea of reference angles. But the first thing that's worth mentioning that in quadrant four, only cosine and its reciprocal secant are positive. No, in quadrant one, all the functions are positive, sine, cosine, tangent, and their reciprocals. In quadrant two, only sine and its reciprocal are positive. And in quadrant three, only tangent and cotangent are going to be positive. But since we're in quadrant four, tangent theta automatically is negative. But to find the actual ratio, we're going to find tangent of theta sub r, which is representing the reference angle. So now we just use this triangle over here. Tangent of the reference angle, we're looking opposite of the reference angle is the side that's 15 units long. And adjacent to the reference angle is going to be 8 over here. So we're using, once again, the reference angle here to get the ratio, but now tangent theta is equal to negative tangent of the reference angle is 15 over 8. Okay, so remember, a key detail here is you have to know which quadrants tangent is positive in, and it's only going to be positive in quadrants 1 and 3. So the quadrant 4 angle here, our answer is coming out negative, and this is our solution to question 2. So now we're looking at a point in quadrant three, and the goal here is to find the exact value of cotangent theta. So right away, when I think about this question, in quadrant three, 
Let's just draw this a little bit neater. We have ASTC. I know in quadrant three that tangent and its reciprocal cotangent are positive. So right away, I'm looking at my final answer and saying, all right, my answer is definitely positive. But now we'll go ahead and sketch this out. We have the point negative seven, negative nine, we'll say is down here. So here's the point. And if we start from standard position, let's say over here, this is spinning all the way here like this. So the big angle theta is the angle going all the way like this, all the way around. But the trick to dealing with an angle more than 90 degrees is once again, we have to use the reference angle. And the reference angle is always the positive acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side of the angle. So here's our reference angle over here. And what we do is we just build a right triangle. And to get to negative seven, negative nine, we have to go over seven units and we have to go down nine units like this. So what we have to make use of here is that since we are in quadrant three, cotangent of theta is going to be exactly equal to cotangent of the reference angle. Because once again, in quadrant three, tangent and its reciprocal are positive. So if we just find out what is cotangent of the reference angle, now we just use this right triangle here and we're looking. Well, first, how about we just find what is tangent of the reference angle? It's easier to think in terms of the basic functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, because you could use mnemonics like this, so katoa, and we know tangent is the ratio of the side opposite of theta over the side adjacent to theta. So tangent of the reference angle is going to be 9 over 7 because we're going opposite of the reference angle and adjacent like this. So cotangent, all we have to do is just take the reciprocal or flip this is going to be 7 over 9. So if cotangent is exactly, I'm sorry, if cotangent of theta is exactly equal to cotangent of the reference angle, that means our final answer to this cotangent of theta is just going to be 7 over 9. So this is our solution to the third example. Okay, for this last question here, now we're looking at this point, negative 20, 21, which is a quadrant two, gonna give us a quadrant two angle, and we wanna find the exact value of secant theta this time. So if we just go ahead and sketch this out, now we're in quadrant two. So we're going to the left 20, and we're going up 21, which is over here. And if we have to spin from standard position, that's gonna be somewhere over here, and we're spinning like this. So our angle theta this time is going to be this angle over here. So this is theta. But once again, if we're in a quadrant other than quadrant one, we have to use this idea of reference angle. So this is the reference angle here. The reference angle is the positive acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side of the angle. Remember, the terminal side of the angle is where the angle ends. So this is going to be in blue, our reference triangle that we're going to use to answer this question. So to get to negative 20, 21, we're going to the left 20 and we're going up 21. So since we have to find secant theta, the reciprocal of cosine, we are going to have to know the length of this hypotenuse, which we could call C. So C squared is going to be equal to 20 squared plus 21 squared. And if we work this out, this is going to be 400 plus 441, which is going to give us 841. And if we take the square root of both sides, C is going to be equal to 29. So there's our hypotenuse. So a few things we have to know here secant theta, remember, is the reciprocal of cosine. And if we use this helpful mnemonic here, ASTC, only sine and its reciprocal cosecant are positive in quadrant two. So right away, I know that secant theta is going to be negative. And to find the exact value of secant theta, I'm going to use secant of the reference angle, which is going to come from this triangle in blue. So now we just have to go through all of this. Secant theta, uh, oh, sorry, secant of the reference angle is equal to one over cosine of the reference angle. So what we could do here is just find what is cosine of the reference angle. And if we use that blue triangle, cosine of the reference angle, remember cosine, if we use so katoa again, is the ratio of the side adjacent to the hypotenuse. So adjacent to the reference angle is going to be the side that's 20 units long over the hypotenuse is 29 units long. So if cosecant, I'm sorry, if cosine theta of the reference angle here is equal to 20 over 29, that means that secant of the reference angle is going to be the, is going to be the flip of this. All we have to do is just take the reciprocal. And this is going to be 29 over 20. So now to answer this question, secant theta is equal to negative secant of the reference angle, which is 29 over 20. Okay, so the idea of reference angles is very big for these type of questions because 
you have to use reference angles anytime you're in a quadrant other than quadrant one. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on finding trig ratios from a point. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topic or topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.